everyone and welcome to The Chrissy B Show, the UK's only TV programme dedicated to mental health and wellbeing topics. Today we'll be talking about World Health Day 2016, which is on the 7th of April, where this year's theme is focused around diabetes. With the guests we have on today, we'll be showing you the consequences of having diabetes and discussing different ways to help prevent, diagnose, treat and care for people with the condition. And if you'd like to get involved, you can tweet us at Chrissy B Show or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. My guests today include Tat Gray, and she's on to talk about her experience with diabetes and what problems she's had to deal with, but more importantly, what she's done to overcome her situation and how she's been able to control her condition. We also have diabetes.co.uk representative Jack Woodfield, and he'll be discussing what the company does and how they help people with diabetes. And we also have lifestyle and fitness expert Ben Cooper, and he's going to be talking about not just the importance of exercise to prevent your own risk of diabetes, but also how important it is to get your children interested in fitness to avoid issues later on in life. We'll also be showing you some street chats about how much people in the, on the streets of London know about diabetes. And we also have a fitness tip with Ben Cooper, this time a video. And we also have doctor's orders with Dr. Rob Hicks. And he'll be discussing what diabetes can do to you if you don't do something about it and take care of it. And we visited Aqua Aerobics at the YMCA in Tottenham Court Road. So we'll see how that went. And later on, I'll also be giving my own tips on what I do to look after my health. But first, let's go to these street chats. Do you know what diabetes is and what is it? Um, is that when you have a lack of... Uh, your, your body can't produce enough insulin to... Insulin, yeah. But the sign to do with glucose as well, I'm not even sure what yeah, it is. To, to break down glucose. Yeah. Well, I know it's a, some sort of disease for which you need to be careful with the level of sugars in your blood. And if you do take sugar, then you need to get insulin. Is that how it's called in English? I'm not sure. Well, it's diabetes it affects to the body when it has too much sugar. Well, it's a discrepancy in blood sugar levels. It could be genetic, it could be, you know, due to somatic mutations. So many reasons, yeah. How do you think you get diabetes? Or can you, is there other ways to get it? Uh, I'm not too sure if it's because you actually consume a high percentage of sugars, maybe? Or if it's something that is even genetical? How do you get it? Well, one's got to have some kind of genetic predisposition and also the diet, lifestyle, it also matters. The risk factors are too great to list. Sugar, eating a lot of sugar. So you can get it through family, like just oh, hereditary as well, yeah. What does it mean if you have it? So what would the symptoms be? What kind of bad things could happen if you had diabetes? Well, the complications could be retinopathies or kind of, you know, peripheral neuropathies and things like that. And also uh, some inconsistent sugar levels would also be problematic, yeah. I don't know, I guess the, because the pressure goes up, then you could have uh, either, uh, how do you call it, like a, yeah, a heart attack, a stroke? You can faint, isn't it? And then you can have a seizure as well. Doesn't it, can't you get like, um, because I know it's linked to other problems as well, like I think thrombosis and things like that. Like when, like the veins and things. I'm not sure, but. Take a random guess at how much diabetes costs every year, the country. Well, I'd say for a single person or just overall? Just the UK. How much does it cost the UK? Uh, I have no idea. It must be a lot, yeah. Yeah, take yeah. a random guess. Some. 20 million or so? I don't know, maybe millions? It's, it's higher. One million pounds? Too much, too big, yeah? Too little? Okay, uh, way too little. 10? 10 billion? 10 billion, yeah. It's closer to about 25. 25 wow. billion. Wow. Billion. 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 Welcome to the show, Helena. Hi, Chrissy. So this Thank is you. great research, yeah. Mm. yeah good, good, good. Um, so really happy to see that the Queen is patron of Diabetes UK. And oh, I was reading, I yeah, I was reading a, a lovely article um, in the mail. It's actually from, from an event that happened last year, actually, but Ooh. it was to mark the charity's 80th anniversary. 
which wow. I was thinking is, is really quite a long time, yeah. isn't it? And thinking it's the Queen's 90th. I mean, obviously she was about 10 yeah. when, it was, when it started. But anyway, so that was great. And there were lots of people suffering from diabetes there mm. and it was lovely photographs, etc. Um, so I was having a read at different people that suffer from diabetes, but also looking at inspirational celebrities, mm. people that really, you know, they achieve their goals despite having diabetes. And looking at also including the supporters as well. And, and hearing yeah. their experiences. So here we go. Okay. So starting with Nick Jonas, who is the youngest of the Jonas brothers. He is so well known and he went public, I think in 2007 with his, um, he's got di type one diabetes. Mm. And he said he realized that something was wrong when he lost weight and he was incredibly thirsty and he was hospitalized, but he learned how to manage his condition. Okay. And he's passionate about sharing his story with others. He's a great ambassador, gives lots of money for research. And um, because he knows his condition so well, he wants to help others that feel isolated and mm. sometimes even embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, good for him, because he's good. quite young as well. Um, a lovely article about, as well, the singer Usher, who mm. opened up about his son's struggle with diabetes, type one. And his son's only seven, eight years old. Yeah. And he was saying that it was, you know, it's so sad to see him injecting every day, but he's inspired by his bravery. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, he's now also an, an ambassador and using his celebrity platform to, you know, to try and advocate for a cure yeah. for the disease. Um, so yeah. that's really great. Um, and that's also celebrity support is really, really important. Um, Melanie C is a passionate supporter of Diabetes UK working with children with diabetes mm -hmm. and she was brought up with her brother who's got type 1 and she knows exactly how it affects people's lives mm -hmm. and um, supports the charity highly. Um, TV presenter Philip Schofield, his mother and brother have type 1 diabetes and he gives continuous supports and, and, and has helped raise thousands. Mm -hmm. um, he, a, a nice quote that he said, as someone who knows firsthand what it's like when someone close to you is diagnosed, I have experienced the shock, fear and anguish the condition can bring, not just for the person affected, but to the whole family, mm -hmm. which I thought was quite poignant. Yeah. Um, something I didn't really know, but I'll just touch on it. Salma Hayek, who's an Oscar nominee actress, she, um, she got gestational diabetes, I hope I pronounced that okay, which is something that you can get um, during pregnancy. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a different different one, but um, experts say you sh that all women should get pre um, checked for this when they're sort of 24 to 28 mm -hmm. weeks pregnant. So that was quite interesting. So we've talked about people with type one, there's type two diabetes too. Um, and there, I, I think there's, a, if, if I'm right in the research, people always think that everybody who gets type 2 are, type two are overweight, they don't do any work, they're unhealthy eaters. I think there's a slight mm. um, you know, degree of truth in it, but not 100% true because there's lots of world-class athletes as well that, that get the condition. Um, moving on to one particular guy, Sir Steve Redgrave, mm. CBE, and obviously ex-Olympic British rower. I mean, he got five gold medals in a row. You know, amazing guy, and he's now... Super fit. Yes, yeah, super, super fit. As in exercise fit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. don't believe you. Anyway, so he's the honorary vice president of Diabetes UK, and he's helping raise awareness. Mm -hmm. um, he's a complete source of uh, inspiration. He was diagnosed in 1997. Um, moving on to Halle Berry, who, um, she, it's a strange one with Halle Berry in fact, um, uh, one of her quotes, I don't love to work out, but if I stick to exercising every day and put the right things in my mouth, then my diabetes just stays in check. Okay. And the thing about her is that she was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 22. Um, she went, went into a coma for a week. Gosh. But then in 2007, she announced that she'd weaned herself off insulin, um, which there's obviously that's not quite right because w what it is is that it, it was proven really that she didn't have type 1. In fact, it was type 2 oh, that she had. Okay. That's the difference in, yeah. in it. So, which is quite interesting. Well, that's quite a big mistake to make. It's a huge it? mistake. And I can't, I mean, obviously, I was trying to do the research about yeah. it. So, I was trying to work out what happened. Whether it's because she obviously looks very fit and mm -hmm. same, I don't know, maybe it was a thought that, I don't know, it sounds odd. Yeah. But anyway, that, that, there's proof in, the, in all the research. 
um, a funny, fun, I don't know if you know Sherry Shepard, she's a comedian, mm -hmm. very funny lady, and, and one of her quotes is, black people don't talk about diabetes that much. I never knew anything. I thought everyone had an uncle with a leg cut off. Oh. Now, it's quite, I know it's sort of, it almost a bit like gosh, but it's quite powerful, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because there has to be some degree of truth in it, despite the fact that she's a comedian. But she was in denial herself for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and she, a friend helped her. She learned how to eat um, and get rid of the white sugars in her diet, so cereals, pancakes, breads, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And she learned to enjoy grilled chicken and fish and loved, start, started to learn to love vegetables. Um, it, it, really lovely story, but just to cut it short, she also, um, she documented it in a book which she has, How to Lose Weight and Beat Diabetes Even If You Don't Have It. Um, so just reading okay. some clips, it's quite yeah. good. Moving on to Tom Hanks as well. Um, I have blood sugars and type 2 diabetes. It's not going to kill me. I just have to eat right and exercise and lose weight mm -hmm. and watch what I eat. And um, he was explaining he's not that overweight, he's overweight, is he? No, no. He, he was explaining, but he has to put on weight for his roles. Oh, he's used to losing oh, okay. weight yeah. for his roles, but he said actually in his real life he doesn't get enough exercise and okay. he's not so great. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Rob Kardashian from the Keeping Up with the Kardashians, who in fact hasn't been in it for a while, mm. he. Um, was diagnosed with diabetes too and was rushed to hospital. He's not been in the series because he's been taking time out to lose weight and get himself together. And unfortunately, he was quite depressed for a time. He put mm. on 100 pounds. His family were worried about him. But he's now seeing Black China, who's a well known um, artist, and was spotted shopping with his son, King Cairo. He's lost weight and he's actually a lot happier. Okay, his mum's good. thrilled because he's reconnected with the family, mm -hmm. which, is, which is lovely. Um, and one story that I'm going to end on, mm -hmm. which is about former Spurs footballer Gary Mubbett, who's I think about 53 now. He was um, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was 17 years old. He looked after himself, he, he knows all, all, you know, everything he needed to do, um, but he was rushed to hospital and had to have a life-saving, well, well an, a five-hour operation to save his leg, and he's got this huge, great big 30-inch scar Gosh. down his leg. He was lucky. Yeah. He actually woke up with a really, really cold leg and panicked. He, he got help because he knew something was wrong. And he was unaware that his diabetes had triggered peripheral arterial disease, which is clogging up the blood vessels in the legs. Scary. How to scary, I know. And, and this is, you know, he, yeah. he's looking after himself, yeah. you know, but he didn't realise this had happened. Um, and he required the main artery to be replaced and almost lost his left leg. Oh, gosh. So something to watch out for. Hospital. I know, oh, thank gosh. goodness. Helena, thank you so, so much. Thank, thank you, you for the information. <laughs> we'll see you again next time. Yeah. All right, guys, so don't go away because after the break, we're going to be speaking to Tat Gray and she'll be talking about her own experience with diabetes and the problems that she had to deal with, but more importantly, what she's done to overcome her situation and how she's been able to control her condition. And we also have diabetes.co.uk representative Jack Woodfield and he'll be discussing what diabetes.co.uk does and some other information too. And later on, I'll also be sharing my own tips on what I do personally to keep fit and healthy. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to our programme everyone where we are supporting World Health Day which is concentrating this year on the threat of diabetes. So now I have joining me Tat Gray and also diabetes.co.uk representative Jack Woodfield. Hi guys, welcome to the show. Hey. So you both have your own experience with diabetes. Should we start with um, Tat first? Can you tell yeah. us what happened? Um, I was diagnosed when I was 13, which is now almost 20 years ago, terrifyingly. Wow. Um, and basically I was 
I'd lost a lot of weight over a few months and I was getting increasingly more tired and more thirsty. And then mm -hmm. there was one weekend where I basically just slept solidly other than to get up to like down loads of water and pee. Uh -huh. And then the, on the Monday, my mum took me to the GP and that's when they did like a urine test and then a blood test. And then I was sent to the hospital and diagnosed. Um, Gosh, I'm like sort of that. a shock. I mean, obviously, probably you were only 13, so you didn't really know what was. Yeah, it was a real shock, on. and it was also like, I didn't like. I think it's a bit different now, but I didn't get any psychological support. I was literally just sort of packed away with some like syringes and vials of insulin because there was no fancy pens like there are nowadays, yeah. and just being like, do this or you'll go blind and lose your feet, and that was kind of oh. it. Um, <laughs> which obviously, as a teenager, not ideal. I mean, no. being sort of 13, 14 is, I think, rough for everyone. Um, and then to be sort of told you have this kind of lifelong condition that there's no getting away from, it really is quite, like it's quite a thing, you know, and, and they now, I know that there is more psychological support on offer yeah, and that, yeah, but, yeah. Back, but then, back then, zip. Actually, I forgot to ask you first, Jack, what, what is diabetes? Can you just tell us briefly what diabetes is before we continue with Tats and your story and also the difference between type 1 and type 2? Well, yeah, there are two distinct types, there are type 1 type 2. Um, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Um, it develops when the immune system mistakenly attacks the insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas, mm -hmm. and as a result, insulin can no longer be produced. Um, type 2 diabetes is a metabolic disorder, on the other hand, and this occurs mm -hmm. when insulin is no longer produced properly in the body. Uh, type 1 diabetes, the, um, the researchers don't fully understand the mechanisms behind it. There's no known um, treatment or way to, sorry, there's no known way to prevent uh, type 1 diabetes from developing. Types of diabetes, on the other hand, um, there's a lot of risk factors. There's genetics, um, stress, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Which um, one's the more serious one? Or are they both? Well, they, they both carry um, very um, significant risks of complications, um, which is why managing blood glucose levels and eating a, eating a healthy diet, getting regular exercise, um, and, and generally you know, doing the right things for your health is, is so important yeah. in making sure that you reduce your risk of these complications. Now, you were very young as well when you were diagnosed. You were only four. I was four, yeah. Um, I'd been in a coma for two weeks. God. Uh, my parents um, and, and the doctors um, didn't know what was uh, what was wrong. Um, eventually, they, um, I think, um, just did enough tests to conclude that it was type one diabetes. Um, so that's all you've known, really, because you didn't really know life before. before exactly. That. Um, and, and for me, I, I look at that in, in not so much regard of a blessing, but slightly fortuitous, because growing up yeah. with diabetes is, yeah. is I, I presume, much easier. I mean, we, we hear stories of teenagers being diagnosed and they struggle, they're overwhelmed with information, they've got things going on, they've got you know, career aspirations. Mm. Yeah. Adults, on the other hand, if you're diagnosed as an adult, it can be um, blindsiding if you've got responsibilities, if you've got duties and family yeah, commitments. Yeah. Um, and it's much harder to incorporate diabetes management at that age compared to my age when it was just yeah. easy to grow up with as a routine. Okay. You want to tell us a bit more about what you do for diabetes.co.uk in just a moment? Because I want to hear a bit more of, of uh, Tat's story because th it did really affect you. Because as obviously, Jack, with, um, you actually kind of, I would say, were kind of used to it because you, you were diagnosed when you were younger. But obviously with you, you knew life before. Yeah. And it, you, you were kind of understanding what was going on. So tell us how that affected you mentally and how you coped or didn't cope. Um, it was just, yeah, it was a very big... Uh, obviously a big like change you know and I do I think it is probably easier if you not know any different because again at like yeah. 13 14 stuff is all, all everything is changing anyway yeah, yeah. Um, and I I found I coped sort of quite badly uh, I don't know if badly is the right word but like I I turned to like drink and drugs basically like and I wow. I did that instead of kind of dealing with it and coping do you think if you'd had the support back then you wouldn't have done that I don't know. I can't possibly say. Mm. I think I've always been like predisposed to kind of addictive tendencies mm -hmm. and then having a way which is like a way to kind of manage how I was feeling, which okay. is with hindsight what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and I also didn't give myself my insulin um, oh, really? like how I was meant to. Yeah. And it's a really common thing, especially among like young girls with type one, mm -hmm. of having like a kind of special eating disorder where if you don't give yourself your insulin, you don't put on weight and you can lose weight, basically. Oh. Just like you lose weight before you get diagnosed because yeah, your yeah. body can't use carbohydrate. It uses your muscle and your fat, basically, to function. Mm -hmm. So you feel terrible <laughs> and you're very thirsty and you're tired, but you lose weight or you just don't put it on. So, like, I really messed around my insulin control with that and partly to do with that because I, I didn't want to put on weight again mm. and partly because I didn't like to have hyperglycemic attacks, like, 
in front of people. I didn't want to tell people I had diabetes. Mm. I was really ashamed for some reason and and I didn't want to be more different than I already felt. And then, you know, when you have a hypo, like you can lose, you know, you lose control. Like it's, you need yeah. help often or you're a bit shaky or sweaty, depending on how bad they are. And I just didn't want that to happen, you know, and my school were remarkably unhelpful around my diabetes staff. Like they were really, mm. You know, Which made like, you feel worse. Yeah, like yeah. they would, you know, have a go at me for being late in, in the morning and stuff. And I was like, well, I just Ugh. have to inject myself. It's kind of traumatic and it hurts. Like, and yeah. and that kind of, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing, man. I just didn't want to have to have a hypo in a lesson and that kind of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And so for many years, I just didn't give myself anywhere near as much insulin as I, I was needing, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like I didn't cope with it that well to start with like it took a long time for me to be able to kind of process that stuff and and look at my other issues as well because there's yeah. so many things related you didn't turn to any like organizations like the one that jack works no for. i don't i mean God, I sound too old. this was before the internet so <laughs> i mean like there weren't so many things like that and like i was kind of resisted there was sort of one kind of support group offered vaguely through the mm. the hospital but like i just was like don't really want to participate so much in that way. I think if yeah. there'd been something more anonymous, like a website, I yeah. think I would have looked at that. How long, again, been, how long has it been going for, Diabetes Stop? Well, um, the Diabetes Forum, um, which we run, started in 2007. Um, okay. That's now got over 192,000 members. It's the largest community of wow. um, people with and without diabetes alike. It can feel so lonely, can't it? But yeah. then look how many people are, and like, are getting support. That's definitely, like, again, like, that kind of support is great. And I've got a couple yeah. of friends who just happen to have type 1, one of my friend's girlfriends, and like me and her message a lot when we're having, like, you know, I was sick last week and everything goes haywire when you're sick and just like, yeah. you know moaning at each other because we get it and that's what's you know, been really important is like you don't really know unless you've been there and okay. like some of the stuff is just sort of really weird and you know you'll just sort of say you know share it with someone is, like that, people, is that what people do like a lot they just share their their experiences. Tell us what the what, what the website does and how it helps people, Jack. Well, we're a community website, um, and community is hugely important in um, encouraging and inspiring other people mm -hmm. um, to achieve um, health benefits um, from other people's stories. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we hear people with type two diabetes that have been able to reverse um, their condition through making um, lifestyle changes, wow. and similarly, people with type one have reported substantial drops in their HbA one C levels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for making changes and from you know, um, inspiring other people on the forum, um, and you know, as well as a um, community website, you know, we run education programs as well. Um, okay. So one of these is a hypo training program to improve people's knowledge of hypoglycemia. Um, towards the end of last year, we released the low carb program as well. Um, the low carb diet has had benefits mm -hmm. proven clinically and anecdotally for people with okay. type one and type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. And this program was based on the latest research and developed with the help of 20,000 people with type mm -hmm. two diabetes. Um, so you know, we're, we're very big in believing that the future of diabetes healthcare is through digital media and using this digital media to improve um, healthcare brilliant. outcomes across all aspects of diabetes care. Okay, brilliant. We've only got about a few minutes left, so I want to hear, um, Tat, you've, you've been through quite a journey and you're now actually uh, training to be a personal trainer. Yeah. Can you tell us quickly about what happened yeah, there I, and um, how, why, how you got to that stage? I basically, like, I've always sort of steadily put on weight and, and one of the things with insulin is it does mean mm. you have to put on weight and I now actually follow a low carb diet and I found that okay. has made a yeah. massive difference to all that, yeah. my weight and my blood sugar control. And, um, and yeah, and then like about almost two years ago now, I just decided I didn't want to be fat anymore. Mm -hmm. And I started working out more and I just discovered that I really love- You love, do weightlifting, don't you? Yeah, I do yeah. proper like heavy, heavy lifting yeah. and I really uh -huh. love it. Um, and so I just found like doing weightlifting and I do kind of boxing and, and, that, and like um, Thai kickboxing and stuff like that for more cardio stuff. Mm -hmm. And my blood sugars have been dramatically different. My HbA1c has been much well, lower well and like I also feel a lot better in myself yeah. mm -hmm. and like yeah I'm trained to be a personal trainer because I just I love it but I think how long have you been training and doing that um about a year and a half now about a year and a half I've been like properly really going for it and like I've lost a significant amount of weight as well I lost 20 kilos to start with That's lost amazing. like dress, like dropped five dress sizes wow and um, how do you feel doing that amazing yeah. like yeah like really amazing and again like things like weightlifting I found really empowering to do with my diabetes because it's like can you just 
tell the ladies out there that are afraid to do weight training because it makes them put on weight and get really muscly? Can you just... Yeah, I keep don't look at it. the scales, man, because I, yes, I lost I 20 kilos. I've now put on eight, but I'm physically smaller because <laughs> it's just muscle. There you go. Um, I'm telling them, but, you know, they don't listen. Yeah, and, you, and it's the best way to lose weight. And, like, I want to look, like, ripped and uh -huh. muscly, which I kind of do. Um, but you don't have to, you know. Yeah. But, like, I definitely... For me, it was a thing of, like... When I lift something really heavy, I feel like I've got autonomy over my body and I've yeah. got this condition, which means I don't in some areas. And then it's like... But okay, you've taken control. Yeah, like, okay, so I can't do this stuff. You know, I, my body can't do this stuff, but I can lift up yeah. a lot more than I weigh, and that's awesome. Do you know what I mean? Wow. It, it feels really empowering. Yeah. Definitely. I that's love really it. Good. Do it. Lift things. Jack, how about <laughs> you? How did you take control of your life? Um... Well, in terms of diabetes management, um, when I was growing up, um, my parents um, obviously took the, the reins in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, I started managing it myself probably around the age of 11, 12. <laughs> um, and growing up, um, I had relatively good control. Um, then I went to university and yeah. mm -hmm. embellished a, a slightly less than favourable lifestyle. And it took a um, stern telling off from a diabetes consultant okay. to get me back on the, um, the, the, the right path. Um, so, um, you know, I. I um, also try and follow a low carb diet. I try mm. to exercise as much as I can. I ran a half marathon um, last year, um, albeit um, very slowly and <laughs> borderline unsuccessfully. But you did it, that's the main thing. I, I did technically um, do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, um, yeah, I'm a big believer in just, you know, um, the, the, the more you time you put in into making sure your blood glucose levels are at a good range, the more yeah. time you then have free to live your life the way you want to. Um, there's no reason why diabetes type 1, type 2 should be a barrier to doing anything you want to do. This is life. what I want to ask you guys actually, just before we go to, to break. For someone that's just been maybe diagnosed as an adult and or maybe it's a parent that has a child that's been diagnosed and it's like their whole world has fallen apart because they're feeling depressed, they feel like, oh my God, why did it happen to me? Or maybe I've been looking after my health, so how come it's happened? And they're feeling really discouraged and really like almost giving up on life. What advice would you give them? Maybe your own tips, what would you say? Start with your tap. Um, I'd say reach out and try and talk to people who've gone through the same experience because that's the mm. best way to get through anything in my in my experience. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of work at it, but remember that you'll never get. It's not going to be the same as if you didn't have diabetes. You're mm. going to have highs. You're going to have lows. Don't beat yourself up. Basically, yeah. like that's the main thing because it can be really frustrating. Yeah. Because sometimes you just have no idea why your sugars are doing what they're doing. Mm. But like again, like talking to other people who've been through it will be able to like reassure you yeah. that that's. That's just how it is, yeah. Okay, how about you, Jack? What would you say to our viewers? Small steps um, is the best way forward. Being proactive, um, I think, is the best mentality to have to approach mm -hmm. um, management. It, it, yes, um, that said, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed when you diagnose this. Take things slowly, you know, do one day at a time. Yeah. Work out how your body is responding to medication, to mm -hmm. lifestyle changes, to mm -hmm. food, to exercise. Take that time small steps and then that will inevitably lead to longer um, health benefits for yourself yeah, yeah. and you'll feel better in yourself as a result as well. Brilliant guys thank you so much I think it's great the way you've both just taken control of your lives and you're doing something about it and fighting back I think it's amazing well done thank <laughs> and thanks for sharing your story with the viewers I'm sure it's helped. Thank, thank you. you. All right guys so don't go away because after the break I'll be speaking to lifestyle and fitness expert Ben Cooper and he's going to be talking about the importance of exercise and healthy living and also how important it is to get your children interested in fitness and health to avoid issues later on in life. And later on, we'll also be showing you some fitness tips from Ben himself, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky 203. Visit ChrissyBShow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everyone to our program today supporting World Health Day. Now before we speak to Ben Cooper, let's take a look at this video with Dr. Rob Hicks to discuss what diabetes can do to you if you don't do something about it and take care of it. Hello and welcome to Doctor's Orders here at the Chrissy B Show. I'm Dr. Rob Hicks. Today we're going to be talking about diabetes, or to give it its medical name, diabetes mellitus, which simply means that there's too much sugar in the blood. To get sugar 
out of the blood into the cells, so it can be used as energy, relies on a hormone called insulin. It acts very much like the key to a, a door. If you think of insulin as the key, you need to unlock the door for glucose, sugar, to go from the blood into the cells. Now the problem in diabetes, in type 1 diabetes, there's no insulin. In type 2 diabetes, there's either not enough insulin or the insulin that there is doesn't work properly. So the result is the sugar can't get out of the blood into the cells and so it builds up in the bloodstream and that's where the problems start. Too much sugar in the bloodstream damages the arteries, it damages the nerves and that increases a person's risk of suffering heart attacks, strokes, kidney damage, blurred vision and visual problems and in men erectile dysfunction. Now in type 1 diabetes this is what we call an autoimmune condition. This is where for some reason, we don't know quite why, the body turns on itself and damages the organ called the pancreas that makes the insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the major risk factor is being overweight and not having enough exercise. Also for type 2 diabetes, if you come from a certain ethnic background, so if you're South Asian, if you're African Caribbean or you're Chinese, you're also at greater risk of developing diabetes. And if there's a family history of diabetes, then again, you're more likely to develop the condition. So what symptoms should you be looking out for? Well, people with diabetes, they feel thirsty and despite drinking lots of liquid, they still feel thirsty. They pass a lot of urine more frequently than usual and often at night. They lose weight for no apparent reason. They feel tired. They may find that their vision is blurred. Normal cuts and grazes that would ordinarily heal quite quickly tend to take much longer when somebody's got diabetes. And people with diabetes often find that they get recurrent attacks of genital thrush infection. Even when they've had the right treatment, the infection comes back. Now, thankfully, there's lots of things that can be done to help manage and keep the blood sugar under control and therefore reduce the chances of suffering these often fatal complications of diabetes. So for type 1 diabetes, people are reliant on having insulin injections. But for type 1 and type 2 diabetes, lifestyle is very, very important. In fact, if you reduce your weight, you're less likely to develop type 2 diabetes in the first place. So that means eating a healthy diet and doing regular exercise. Now with type 2 diabetes, in addition to lifestyle, medication is often needed and sometimes people need to have insulin as well. So if you're worried that you may have diabetes, maybe you've got some symptoms, maybe you've got a family history of diabetes, or you just like to be checked, then do have a chat with your own doctor who will be more than happy to talk you through the process of having a urine test and some blood tests to see whether you have diabetes or not. And that's Doctor's Orders. So thanks very much to Dr. Rob Hicks there. So now I have with me our lifestyle and fitness expert. You see him all the time on our videos, but he's here in person today, and that's Ben Cooper. Hello, Ben. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you in the studio. I'm very well. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Great to have you in the studio. So um, obviously, exercise and looking after health is great yeah. in general, but can you tell us about the link with diabetes and how it helps combat that? Well, we've already heard a lot about diabetes and how the that lifestyle can obviously improve that. The way it does that through exercise is that, as, as Dr. Rob has just said, the insulin um, is like the lock and key mechanism. So mm -hmm. when you exercise, you're obviously training your muscles and the, the muscles need energy. So when yeah. you train, it encourages energy to be driven within the muscle to be able to work. So therefore, your blood sugars will obviously go down when you exercise. Okay. So if you're type 1 diabetes, you have, to, you have to be aware of that because you'll have to bring a snack, bring something to okay. eat whilst you yeah. train, otherwise um, you're likely to have a, a bit of a crash in the in sugars and that can be dangerous for type 1. Type 2, obviously, you, you want to train mm -hmm. um, and also you have to be aware of your blood sugars, but that training will, will help to drive the sugars within to the cell and power the muscles to be able to, to work. Okay. In terms of food, um, obviously the, the, the foods have to be right for that individual person. Mm -hmm. So you, um, everybody is different and I think that's what approach needs to be taken to diabetes is quite an individual approach, not just mm -hmm. a one size fits all oh, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Which, you know, 
maybe what we're getting now a, t a bit too much of. Yeah. Um, so it's important to speak to maybe like a, a personal trainer or, or someone, uh, an expert. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm. But that's where, um, and the guests on before, um, we're talking about contact. Yeah. Um, and getting in contact with people who have been through it, what they did, yeah. um, so that you can actually be pointed in the right direction of who can help mm -hmm. um, and obviously go to the internet as well, but yeah. be open-minded because there's lots of stuff on the internet that you, know, you might not, <laughs> might okay. point you in the wrong direction to what you need yourself. You've got to listen to your body as well, which is so what the, I encourage. Would you say that's, um, that's the case with the type of exercise that you decide to take on or is there like a, a form of exercise that's great for um, yeah. For diabetes, obviously we heard tap with, with weight training, but what yeah, would you recommend? Yeah, exactly. So um, that's what we've obviously described how the cell um, gets the energy into it. And mm -hmm. when you're doing strength training, that happens a lot more often okay. than if you're doing cardiovascular. Cardiovascular will train your heart and your lungs, but strength training will train all your muscles. And you've got mm. huge muscles, you've got quadriceps, you've got the glutes, and they're big powerhouses that need a lot of energy. So when you do that, your blood sugars are going to be a lot better managed. Um, the other type of training which you can go on through um, from cardio, so I would always start with cardio, to mm -hmm. be honest, because it's, you know, you can do it, you can go for a walk, um, and it's quite easy, it's easily done. Mm -hmm. Once you're comfortable with that and you're doing that as part of your lifestyle, then go into strength training, maybe work with someone, or if you're confident enough, go into a gym and, and do strength okay. training yourself. Okay. Then you can look to, to kind of progress that and look at, um, HIIT training, so high intensity interval training, has had really, mm. really good results with people with diabetes. Okay. Um, and managing their blood sugars. And this is kind of short, intense bursts of, of exercise, maybe 15 minutes, um, and you're doing kind of 10, 20 seconds of intense exercise, 10 mm. seconds of rest, 20 seconds of intense exercise, and you keep going through that for the 15 minutes. So obviously you want to build up to that because it's, yeah, yeah. it's pretty full on, hence the, the name. Okay. High intensity training. In terms of prevention, Ben, because uh, obviously this is we're talking about stuff for people that already have yeah. diabetes. Can it really be prevented with exercise yeah. and healthy living? Well, that, not just exercise on its own. Exercise, I think, in my mind, is a minimum. So we need to okay. move. The human body needs to move. You know, when you move, you're flushing toxins through the body. You're mm -hmm. moving your lymphatic system, so it helps detoxify, and with that is blood sugars. Then food is massive as well. Um, so types of things I would definitely avoid if, if, you're, if you're worried about um, your weight mm -hmm. is the grains, carbohydrates, processed carbohydrates need to go, processed sugars, and then focus Can on Can you give us some examples of what those, those are? What processed, yeah. so grains Carbs like, and, yeah. <laughs> the favorite ones <laughs> like bread, pasta. Even, um, even brown bread? Yep, even yeah. if you look okay. at the GI index, um, the brown bread's still very high because it all converts into sugar. It okay. all breaks down because it's... What it's about spelt flour? There yeah. we go, I'm going off again, I'm asking for yeah. myself. <laughs> no good? No. Well, it, well if, you're, if, you're, if you know you're moving towards diabetes, then no, it wouldn't mm, be. But okay. if, you're, still if you're able to deal with and manage your blood sugars, you would have yeah. to have it with a lot of fat. And this is the other thing mm. I was going to mention is when you eat snacks or you have meals, um, make sure you have proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates all together. Okay. Because that um, really helps balance those blood sugars. There's one thing we didn't talk about um, is leptin. So when you're also insulin resistant, which mm -hmm. is type 2 diabetes, that coincides with being leptin resistant, which is leptin is your satiety um, hormone that tells you when you're, you're hungry mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So. If you, if you are eating regularly and you're getting a lot, lots of fats help with that hormone to, um, to activate it, the leptin, mm -hmm. and then the, re the receptor will pick that up and tell you, oh, I've had enough, I don't need to eat anymore, which is okay. great. This is what yeah. we all want, because otherwise we'll just keep eating keep and eating <laughs> and eating. <laughs> yeah. So that is key. Those, the balanced meals and snacks okay. is key. Um, and obviously avoiding those foods, if you can, mm -hmm. and eating animal protein fat, avocados, olive, olive oils, mm. olives, I love all, that stuff. all the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, Ben, as well, uh, just before we go, can you tell us, obviously, kids, a lot of parents worried about mm -hmm. their children because we have the technology, we've got the social yep. media, everything, and they're just, sometimes the kids are just stuck in front of their phones and they're not moving. How would you say is the best way to encourage exercise in children? Because obviously that's 
um, preventing issues later on in life. So I think I've gone, I've said this on a previous show, but you, as an adult or a parent, you're an example to that child. So mm -hmm. <laughs> when when you start to exercise or you know you play a sport or you cook and eat a certain way, yeah. children pretty much just copy what you're doing or they tell you the line. So that's really important. But also when you're cooking, get the kids involved and cook with them because they will find it really mm -hmm. fun and they always want to eat what they've cooked. Always. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's something healthy, there's so many good books um, of cookery books now yeah. that you can get with healthy recipes. Um, and yeah, just I know in this country the weather's not great, but the other thing is get outside more and try and, you know, if you, the parent, play football or any kind of sport, mm. get the kids involved and they will, they will want to do it. Um, yeah. If they don't, then you don't want to force them. Um, but I guarantee there will be something active that they, they want to do, even if it's climb a tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll want to do it at some stage. So, yeah. You'd... So parents start climbing trees yeah, and exactly. your kids will follow you, right? <laughs> it's good to that. But yeah, be the example that they wanna, you want to see in them, I think. Okay. That's my recommendation. Brilliant. That's great stuff. All right, thanks very much, man. We'll see you again next time on one of your videos, which I love, by the way. Great stuff, Good. and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. All right, guys, so don't go away because after the break, as I said, we will be watching one of Ben's fitness tips. We also have a visit to Aqua Aerobics at the YMCA in Tottenham Court Road, and I'll also be sharing what I do to keep healthy, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to our programme today, which has been in support of World Health Day and also concentrating on the threat of diabetes. So before the break, we met with Ben Cooper. Now here's some fitness tips from the man himself. Hi, and welcome to Move360 Studios. My name is Ben. Uh, we're here with the Chrissy B Show. And today is all about feeling good. So I'm gonna get as many muscles working in the body as possible. Um, so the whole body feels good. It feels like it's had a great workout and you end up feeling better. First exercise we're gonna do, we just need a couple of dumbbells. If you haven't got dumbbells, just use some books, or some cans, anything you've got at home. Let's hold them in front of you. We're gonna squat down and come up. Squat down and come up, holding the dumbbells this way, keeps your back nice and upright and you get to work your biceps and your upper back at the same time as you're squatting. And you wanna do about 10 to 12 reps of those squats. Then with your same dumbbells, we're gonna go into a shoulder width stance, bend of the hips, nice straight back, and then pull through with the arms. So like a scarecrow, just a few teaching points. Just let the arms hang down and then you're pulling back from the elbows. If you don't have weights, you can just hold yourself like this with the arms out and hold for about a minute. That'll be quite tough because that'll really work the extensors in the back. Okay, and now we're gonna go on to uh, our push-ups, which are down onto the mat. So you're just gonna use your body weight. Um, a few teaching points on how to do a proper push-up. Make sure your chin stays in. So watch me when you do it and then I'll explain it again. So down, chin comes in. So a lot of people try and get their head down to the ground, which pulls you into very bad posture. So the chin comes forward. Make sure it's the chest that's going to the, to the floor and the elbows can stay about 45 degrees from the shoulder and pushing up from there. So watch me again on that. Okay, and then you should have a really good push up that works your abs, your chest, your arms, pretty much your whole body along with the rest of the exercise. And if you struggle to do a full push up, 
um, you can do a slightly easier version, which you stay on your knees, so cross your feet at the back, but make sure again the same principles, the chin stays in, chest to the floor, and back up. Okay, you don't want to do it like this, that's not a push up. We're going to go here, hips come forward, chest comes down, chin stays in. That way we still work the abdominals, otherwise they just get left behind and no one wants to leave their abdominals behind. <laughs> so talking of abs, we're gonna go on to a more specific abdominal exercise. I call this navel radiation. The belly button is the navel, so we're gonna radiate around it to work the abdominal wall. So lying down on your mat, spread out like a starfish, and then you're gonna come up to the middle and then control back up. Okay, and open the arms and legs back where they were. Come up again. And control down. So when you're doing that one, try and keep your tongue to the roof of your mouth. That helps to use the right mus muscles in your neck. And try and breathe out as you come up and breathe in as you go back. And you'll really feel that start to, to work those abdominal um, muscles. And it's a great complement after the muscles uh, we've already worked. So the whole body has got a workout in those four exercises. So now it's time for me to tell you guys at home what I did uh, when I started to try to get healthier. I thought I was pretty healthy actually until I started to do a bit of research and, and watch some internet videos and then I found out that I wasn't as healthy as I thought so I tried to improve more. So the first thing that I did was to get rid of the temptation. So it's, it's really difficult to get healthy if your cupboards are full of unhealthy things. And I know that's difficult when you live with other people and they, they love to eat junk food, but as, as much as you can, try to get rid of the junk food from your cupboards and from your fridge. And it will, it will make it a lot easier to be able to control yourself because the first thing you're gonna reach for when you're a bit peckish is the bad stuff if you have them in the cupboards. The second thing that I did and that I do in general actually is to keep moving. So and anything that I'm, that I'm doing, so for example, if I need to pop out to run an errand, I walk really, really fast. And it's not just because I want to exercise, but I'm normally in a hurry and I've got lots of things to do. But if you just make that a daily habit of just walking quickly wherever you're going or just moving, even if it's in the house or in the office, um, you know, make your movements very fast. And it does add up at the end of the day rather than just sort of taking things at a very leisurely play, uh, pace. And also, wherever you can, if, you, if you're in a, a building, for example, that has a lift, try and take the stairs at least a couple of flights until you get more, uh, more used to it. The third thing that I started to do was uh, weightlifting. Now, this was back in the day when I was a lot younger, but I also started uh, doing this again recently. Um, and it, it really does make you feel great. And as Tat was saying, you know, you do lose weight. You do turn up very, very quickly. You don't put weight on very easily at all when you're weight training. And it just makes you feel strong and really good and, and really healthy. So I'm really glad that I've actually got back into that more than I had before. And my next point is, I also make my own food. So you know, it's, it's sometimes you really don't know what's, uh, what kind of nasty stuff is in takeaways, depending obviously where you go, there's some really great places, but you'd have to be really, really careful about the stuff that you buy outside. So if you can take your own food and you know it's fresh, you know you haven't put any additives or any horrible stuff in it, you know you, you can trust it. So wherever you can make your own food. Something else that I do is I do drink water. So I completely stopped the fizzy drinks. I mean, I, I remember a time when I used to just have like a massive, uh, you know, those, those two litre bottles of cherry aid in my fridge. Um, and I used to literally just grab the bottle and I just used to, <laughs> just, to just down it. And I would used to drink loads and loads of it. And so did my husband actually. And I, I stopped that completely quite a number of years ago, but then I was still on the carton juices and of course they're full of sugar as well. So I stopped those as well. Now all I drink is water. And if I fancy something fizzy, I'll just have a sparkling water. Another thing that I did was to start to cut out sugar. 
I'm not saying I've cut it out completely. I do have the odd cake here and there, but you know, compared to before, I could not live a day without chocolate. I had to have a chocolate after my, my lunch, uh, a bar of chocolate I'm talking about, and then after dinner as well, I'd have to have another bar of chocolate or a cake or something. So I started to cut that out of, out of my system completely. And now I just make my own chocolate. I buy the raw stuff, make it myself with some coconut oil and some dates and stuff. And it's absolutely delicious. It tastes much nicer than the fake stuff. And then the next thing I did, uh, I actually made these changes gradually, so I didn't do this um, over a week or a month or anything like that. It was gradual changes, so if you, if you try to do everything at once, it's not likely to work. So maybe, like for example, this you can say to yourself, if you, if you want to get healthy, that is, okay, this week I'm going to stop the fizzy drinks, for example. You get used to that after a while and then you say, okay, so now this week I'm going to, I don't know, cut back, not eat as much chocolate. And if you do it, if you do things gradually like that, because you're going to see the results of maybe one of the things you're doing, it motivates you then to do the next thing and the next thing. And for me, I'm, I'm now always looking for new and better ways to look after my health because I enjoy it. I feel good for it. You know, I started to introduce superfoods and all that kind of stuff. And I feel great and I feel a lot healthier than I did when I was um, in my 20s. So those are the things that I did and I hope that helps you. So now for us to go to uh, Aqua Aerobics at the YMCA in Tottenham Court Road. This is something that you could consider trying if you want to try something new and, and especially if you've got joint problems, this is great to do. Let's take a look. Hi Chrissy, it's Mike here and we're back with Declan Duncan at the Central YMCA. What does exercising do for you then? Okay, Aquasize is really good because it's water based obviously. Um, it's good for people with um, any sort of joint problems. It's, it's the water softens the movements as well, so you're working with the resistance of the water as, um, throughout the class. So it's good for older adults and people with injuries. It's good for pregnant mums as well. And it's good for mental health because it's kind of fun in the water really, you know. What made you start the aqua class in the first place? Um, well, purely there was no other, it's the only water-based activity or aqua size class that we have on the timetable here. Um, so it's the only one that we have on both the kind of the older adults timetable and on the general timetable. Did you already have like the same clients as you do now, the same people that come to the class? Do you know, um, it's pretty much the same faces on a Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock. It looked today like it was predominantly older people, but it's, it's kind of, it is a mixture. From what I've already found out so far, people seem to come here because it's, uh, it feels like community or even families almost. So would you say that's something that you'd like, try to present here? Definitely for what I run here, my programs, we try and promote the sense of that it's more than just a gym. Um, you know, it's a place that they can come in, they can socialize, they can meet new people. came to Declan's class um, November year ago and that was really when I first came to the YMCA. The most important thing is Declan himself because he's a great tutor, full of energy and uh, doesn't mind being teased by us. I think I'm one of the loudest to always go etc. Um, and I think he has a good routine. We all like the music. So what makes you come back every week? Well, because it's something to do. It keeps you occupied. Hopefully, it keeps my mind going. <laughs> and, you know, it's just the friendliness of it all. Everyone's so friendly, and you just get on and, you know, with everybody. So, would you recommend anyone else, or did you recommend? Yeah, you know, sort of a few people have come up here that I know, you know, I said, I'll come up there. It's, you know, it's, it's friendly.
So thanks very much once again to Declan there. All right, guys, so we have reached the end of today's program, but if you have any comments that you would like to share with us or if there's a topic that you would like to see covered on this program, please do get in touch with us via the website, chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now. It was a wonderful work experience. Um, it's great that this topic is being covered in such detail and had a great time. I've loved my experience today on the show. I think it's a really important topic that everybody needs to know more about and education is the key. Learning more about health, more about lifestyle, more about food, and then we can be ha happier and healthier forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was really fun. Chrissy was lovely and I always like talking about myself, so it was good, yeah. With Ben Cooper, now here's some fitness tip from the man himself. Sorry, say that again. Tips. <laughs>